Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It's June 6th, 2022. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. We do have uh, a lot to get to today on Houston Life. Yeah, and it's good to have you back, by Thank the way. You. It's some fun, fun surprises. We're going to have that in just a minute. But first, the brand new season of American Ninja Warrior. It kicks off here on KPRC2, and you better believe it, we are celebrating. That is right. Let's check in with Lauren. <laughs> oh, you guys. We can't celebrate any other way than at an official American Ninja Warrior gym. We're here with alumni veteran Karen and her husband, Sam San. I'm going to get a lesson on how to do that, even though we know how that's going to turn out. But you don't want to miss this. All things American Ninja Warrior are coming up during Houston Life this afternoon. I got the T-shirt. Yes, girl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she looks great. And first on Houston Life, we're sitting down with the Fifth Ward native driving to Yavaldi with thousands of children's books. Find out why her story makes this donation so much more meaning meaningful. And did you know the month of June is Caribbean Heritage Month? Joe Sam is in the kitchen with some delicious ways to celebrate. I am, you guys, and I cannot wait to taste it all. We're going to get a quick lesson on how to make a tasty dish packed with island flavor and how you can celebrate this rich culture with a special event. But now we're going to send things back to you. Okay, sounds good. A lot to get to today, but first have a check of the forecast. That is right. It is hurricane season. Hi, Frank. It hey. is hot today. I mean, that's going to be the uh, sizzling forecast all the way through. You're going to say heat a lot this week, so watch out for it. Here's a look right now outside. It just looks hot. That's the air you can wear out there. Look at these temperatures. I've got them right there at 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. They just keep adding up, don't they, all the way through. 95 in Huntsville feels like 101. Brenham, 103, 101. Conroe, and I'll tell you, this is going to be one of the cooler days this week. The humidity is at 50, 52 percent, so it's hot and it's humid. The south wind is in place, so that's going to continue to keep us on the warm side. Going to go for a dog walk with Hank. I tell you, <laughs> that, that, that tongue is bigger than that head. I swear, 94 at 4, 93 at 5, 90 and 88. I'll have your full forecast, but get ready. It's just as hot as your show, Courtney. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Well, listen, that was a little glimpse of what happened. Um, I took a few days off. We flew out to Vegas, unbeknownst to this woman right here, my mom. So she was visiting here in Houston, left the Sunday before Memorial Day. When she left, she said, OK, I'll see you for Nutcracker Market in November. We were like, OK, bye, Mom. <laughs> she had no idea we were all flying out. My entire family, the boys and I in Orlando, arrived first uh, in Vegas. But I called her from the car to wish her a happy birthday. And you told her you were at work. I was at work, and I said, Mom, I'll call you after the show. Happy birthday. I love you. And, uh, you know, I'll call you after the show. And about 15 minutes later, ding dong is when we rang. So here's what happened. Oh. Speechless. She had no. She said to me later. She goes, "Gosh, I felt like I was having an out of body experience. I just spoke to you on the phone. How are you right here?" Then we couldn't find the keys. We oh, couldn't find she, the keys. She, she threw, threw the, the keys, keys in the celebration. And she's wearing a Betty White shirt. Stay golden Stay is her golden. shirt that she has on. Aunt Rob there in the background. Yes, too, Aunt right? Rob was there. Oh. So Thursday, June second was her birthday, and that kicked off a series of parties. And so my uh, sister-in-law, niece, and nephew were. In um, and then there's my mom because Thursday night we got all gussy and it was all about the rhinestones and the glitz and the glamour because we headed over to uh, to Harrah's for another surprise for another surprise to see the one and only Donnie Osmond and y'all Donnie knew it was mom's birthday so check this out. You're 90? Yes. No. What is your secret, lady? <laughs> Martinis. <laughs> Martinis. <laughs> Martinis. <laughs> we better start. No, no, I'm kidding. Orly, it's your birthday. Time to celebrate and sing a song. Who? You. And another kid. I know the year is true, but 90 years. <laughs> Oh, 
kiss <laughs> on the neck there, maybe. Oh, I think wow. she got a little something. Um, he was so sweet. I did tell him I was supposed to marry him. So, you know, he was like, well, where, where have you been? But this was so incredibly sweet, and he's so gracious. Um, so this was a little meet and greet before the show. And I will tell y'all, please plan your trip to Vegas. You Donny Osmond fans, get on out there. The show, 90 minutes of high energy, pure entertainment. She loved every second of it. Oh, you can tell by the look on her face. Not only was she surprised, but she was having the time of her life. She really was. And then we just had, we had party after party. Sunday when we woke up, I said, we're done. There's no other surprises. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> we're tired. We're tired. You know, we need a break. We need to detox. But it was so awesome, Mom, celebrating you. And... 90 years. It was crazy. 90 years. 90 years young. Eileen, we love you. Happy birthday. And wow, what a big weekend. And she was showered with all kinds of cards. The Houston Life team, she got her your card from everybody here. She, I was trying to get her 90 birthday cards. I, we got close. We didn't quite get to 90. It's a lot of cards. She got a ton of cards and people she hasn't heard from or seen from and seen in a long time. That's really, really Yeah, cool. it was real sweet. I'm Very glad special. you had fun. We missed you here at Thank Houston you. Life. Thank you. I know. We missed y'all too. We did a lot of things, which is why I think my voice kind of went away. Um, Friday night, I ran from work. We went to a UCLA alumni event. Fun. A college. I mean, there's so many Bruins here in Houston, and we had alums from the early 70s through just last year. I think we have some video we can show our viewers, but it was so great to reconnect with some of these brands. Have you and done this before? This was my first time, and most of these people I didn't know, the uh, lovely hosts right there, Doug and Veronica Overman at their home, and they helped organize this entire thing, but we're trying to like restart the alumni thing. These were our friends Kirk and Anna, because then we ran to their baby shower. They're expecting their first together. It's so exciting. And then we had a baby shower for that dog, Bella, our friends Darren and Zach, oh, Oscar's cousin, Oscar's Courtney. Oscar's cousin. And look, you can see uh, oh, that look, she oh. is is oh, considering oh, it. She's oh, almost. So for the counter surfers, <laughs> that dog is only seven months old and she's already that tall. Adorable. And this is Mando, the dog of our friends, Brittany and Dale, who hosted. Love. Oh, I yep. know. It's like I smell something real I know. good up here. But for seven months old, I mean, Bella is so well behaved. Oh, and um, but, uh, yeah, we were, we were very happy for them. Their family is growing. Congratulations. Let's check in with Bella in seven more months. <gasps> Wait, is that Bella there? Who's no, that? and this is just another uh, Bruin dog. The, the weekend was full of dogs. This, this looks like another... Oscar. I thought, is Oscar <laughs> wearing a, a Bruin's kerchief? This was at Doug and Veronica's house as this well. Looks, so. He looks just like Oscar. He does kind of, right? Yeah. I know, the weekend was filled with dogs. Love By the, the way, doodles. Frank Billingsley and Kevin, their, their new dog, we've met him a couple times. We saw him yesterday, too. So, so cute. Know, full of dogs. Brandon's been looking when, at it. When the, are you guys going to have your puppy? Brandon has been looking at the Houston SPCA's website yeah. all weekend, just waiting to find the right one. I know. Here's what you do. You don't look at the website. You go in person. If we go in and person, then you come we home. will go home with five dogs. Yes, exactly. We will not do Help that. Help the shelter. That would be bad. <laughs> then I would turn into our coworker, Susan Miller, who picks up every stray dog from the street. We love Susan. We love Susan. She's the nicest woman I've ever met. She can't pass a dog on the road without adopting it. She has a whole zoo in her backyard. Hi, Susan. We love you so much. She's on the phone. Oh, she's calling. She's on the phone right now. <laughs> hey, so on Friday, we had a really great moment because we had the prize wheel. And luckily, we were able to give away another $1,000 prize. Love that. But it was to someone who I think really could use the money. And I know you were busy, so you didn't watch the show. Here's what you missed. Oh, Let's it looks see. like you're going to land Ooh. on $1,000. Oh, my word. Andy, you just won $1,000. Andy. Are you okay? Oh Did I spin okay for you? Is that okay? Is that, that all right? That was wonderful because my situation is I'm living in my car, which is why I signed up for all these contests, oh, just wow. to get a chance to see if I could better myself in any way. My gosh. Well, wow. It is your lucky day, Andy. This is great news. We're so happy for you. And hopefully this helps you get back on your feet there. Oh, Let's it looks see. Like what a land. moment. I know. Can you believe? And so for us here on the show, I mean, we, we have very limited time with many of our guests, right? Yeah. And with Andy, we only had a couple minutes. So when she dropped this bombshell that she's been living in her car, of course, I mean, 
our hearts go out to yes. her. And we've had so many viewers write in and say, hey, how can we help this woman? So um, the update is that more donations have been coming in for Andy. And if anyone wants to, to be connected, we can we can help make that happen. But that's sort of the magic of our community here at Houston Life. Sometimes you just need a sign. You need a little something and hang on. And man, she got that moment. Yeah, she did. That We're is so you, great Andy. for sure. And by the way, speaking of our KPRC2 insiders, we're giving away two tickets to one insider for the Wine Rendezvous Grand Tasting and Chef Showcase. It's happening this Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Woodlands Waterway Marriott Hotel and Convention Center. You can enter this sweepstakes once a day through Wednesday at 11 a.m., but you must be a KPRC2 insider to win. Remember, it's all free to join. All the information is on our website. That's at HoustonLife.tv. Yeah, super easy to join, and that is a great sweepstakes right it, there. It really is. And by the way, speaking of wine and food week in the woodlands, after the break, how clever uh, the family of Cleverly Stone is honoring her legacy as the diva of Houston dining. We are looking forward to this conversation. Also, the latest season of American Ninja Warrior starts tonight right here on KPRC2. Lauren Kelly is live at a local gym. <laughs> Lauren, OK, so far so good. Okay. I'm learning. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Ready? One. Two. Come in, come in. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> More from Sam Sam Jim next. Yeah! We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Houston Life. It's time now for our H-Town sit-down. Let's meet today's guest. Known as the diva of dining, Cleverly Stone's influence on Houston's culinary scene and philanthropy is unparalleled. Her local talk show, The Cleverly Show, was Texas's most popular and longest running radio program about food. She was the founder of Houston Restaurant Weeks, the city's largest fundraiser of its kind, supporting the Houston Food Bank. She passed away in 2020, but her legacy continues through her daughter, Katie Stone, who is carrying on her mom's mission to beat hunger in Houston. And today, Katie joins our H-Town sit down. And we have Katie Stone with us today. Come on out, Katie. Great to see you. Hello. Welcome it's to nice Houston to see Life. you guys. Thank you so much for having Welcome me. Welcome to the show. You look so much like your oh mom. My goodness. It's a trip. I know. Do people say that to you all the time? They do. And sometimes I feel badly because it. I feel like they get very upset and emotional, but, and I, you know, I can't help it, but yeah, it is, I think yeah. it comes from a good place. Yes, you know, they see does. your eyes and you, we see her yes. in you. Same eyes. It's the exact same eyes. I've taken pictures and held them up, you know, next to each other. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. It's also hard to believe it was May 28th, mm -hmm. 2020. Yes. Your mom passed away. So it's yep. been more than two years. How are you doing? And tell us about the foundation and the work because it never slowed down. Yeah, no, there really wasn't time to do anything because Houston Restaurant Weeks, you know, is August 1st and runs through the entire month. Um, you know, she passed away at the end of May. She was really sick for about a year and a half. And so a lot of the work that would have been done just, you know, hadn't gotten done. So we were kind of in a scramble mm -hmm. um, to get things going because, you know, as you remember back in 2020, it was right at the start of the pandemic. Yeah. We had no idea what restaurants were, if they were going to be open, if they were going to be allowed to be open. Um, but we understood that we really needed to run the event because they needed the revenue they needed the business they needed the drive um, and that's what houston restaurant weeks has done it's turned august which is usually their slowest month of the year into their most profitable month of the year it really was um you know she was so ahead of her time to really come up with this idea and to support these restaurants that she loved so much and to have this legacy continue how special is that for you oh i mean it's it's incredible i mean i can't even tell you you know, how many people, I mean, even every every week I get emails and messages from people that she touched and people that she helped. And it really kind of transcends even just the restaurants and, um, you know, even the food bank. I mean, you know, during August, there would be a lot of restaurant layoffs because restaurants weren't that busy. Um, and, you know, I, I would be with my mom when we would be in a restaurant and, you know, a, a valet, uh, you know, guy or girl or a server would say, you know, thank you so much for everything you've done because I'm working this month and I can, you know, buy new shoes for my daughter who's going into kindergarten because I'm working and, and I usually wouldn't be working. So um, that 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 leaves a mark. Uh -oh. That that's 
Yeah. Without question, <laughs> yeah. she has left her mark yeah. on the city. And I think a lot of people, because she is so ingrained in the food culture and philanthropy culture mm -hmm. of Houston, people don't realize she moved here from New York City in 1989. Yeah. Uh, she was working for Foley's at yes, the time, the yes, department store, yes. and it was all through. I mean, this was before the internet, and so when she started blogging about food, yeah. it really was just like she was faxing her friends restaurant information. I mean, it's incredible. Can you tell us more about that time in her life? You are absolutely correct. You know, this was way before social media. She was, you know, we moved here from the East Coast. Uh, you know, Foley's moved her here and then eventually she started working for the Houston Post and she was an editor and, um, you know, she had a column, a weekly column with her you know, photo in the newspaper, and that was a big deal back then, you yeah. guys. This was this this was before Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So having a color photo of yourself in in a you know a major newspaper was a big deal, um, and so it really just kind of grew. You know, her her brand, so to speak, and her mission um, just kind of grew from that. And and yeah, she was pounding away at her typewriter. I still have that typewriter. Oh, thank God. Awesome. Yes, I do. She would pound away at the typewriter. You know, all hours of the night. And she created what really was the first and only foodie, you know, restaurant chef newsletter in the city. And she did it all by hand. You know, I think today, if she, when she's looking down at this city and seeing the recognition that Houston yep. is getting, and just yep. in the last 12 months, in the last nine months, she'll be so proud. I think she would. And I think she would be extremely proud just because she would understand what that has done for the community. You know, um, Houston Restaurant Week's, you know, the core of, of the event, um, of course, is to help restaurants in the Houston Food Bank, but it was also to get people out of their comfort zone and yeah. trying new restaurants. You know, there are restaurants outside the loop, you know, yeah. and, and that was kind <laughs> of a big deal back then, too. It's like, go and try these different cuisines. Maybe you might not have thought to try a, a particular type of cuisine. Well, here you can do it during Houston Restaurant Weeks for a valuable, you know, good price, fixed price, and have multiple courses and try, you know, different things. So, um, you know, just understanding the impact that that has in the city. I mean, it's hundreds of millions of dollars that, that translates and kind of trickles down into all of the service providers. And I think, you know, she's, she's still up there directing. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, don't. <laughs> That is, that is for sure. We we all feel it. I mean, we feel we feel her in everything that we do for sure, and and so that's that's a blessing. And Wine and Food Week, of course, is back. We uh, we're so excited this is back, and she's going to be honored uh, during this event. Yes, this was one of her favorite events, you know. And I still I I have a T-shirt, a very old Wine and Food Week T-shirt that I wear quite often. Um, <laughs> that you know she loved this event. She was a longtime judge, um, and you know she had them on her radio show very often, and and she loved the people who. Uh, who were running the event and it was for a good cause and so many wonderful chefs up in the woodlands too you know it's such an amazing area and just mm -hmm. a bustling area and um, and so I'm I'm so so honored that they are inducting her in, into the Hall of Fame I, I think it is um, just a wonderful cause and I'm, I'm so honored that they are including me in participating in, in the events and this will be my first my first time going I've never I've never been to the event have you guys been to the event before or? years ago yeah yeah, yeah. So this will be my first time, so I'm excited. Every every day they have different events, and um, so Saturday is the um, kind of the big, you know, wine grand tasting event and the judging where all the chefs come out. And so I'll I'll be there on Saturday um, accepting the award on her behalf. Fantastic and well deserved on this award, yeah. Katie Stone. Thanks so much for stopping by, and thanks for continuing the mission that your mom worked so passionately thank uh, you. to create. I have a lot of help, so that is a blessing as well. So thank you guys so of much. Course, of course, and congratulations. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. For more information about Wine and Food Week, head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. I'm hungry just talking about mm -hmm. it, by the way. And thirsty. Okay. Still ahead, a Pearland High School senior was named to an All-American fishing team. We're gonna find out about his trip to fish alongside an elite and his plans, of course, after graduating. And next, we're gonna meet a mom on a mission to comfort the youngest members of the Uvalde community. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to Houston Life. When tragedy hit Yavaldi, a Houston native and author decided to show her support to the community the best way she knows, and that's through books. So she's driving to personally deliver a huge donation to Uvalde for their library summer reading program. And she's here with us today, Shaletta Brundage, who joins us now with more details on this great gesture. We have met before, but over Zoom. Right, this yes. is our first time in person. Well, welcome into the studio. Thank you. And appreciate you being here. I, we know that you recently moved to Minnesota. Yes. Um, you're driving all the way from Minnesota to Houston. 
What spoke to you to make this drive? I saw a story on NBC that the El Progreso Library was continuing their summer reading program um, even when people call for them to close. And the library director said he wanted to provide a good space for the kids to come and meet with their friends and just have fun. And I thought, I wanna do more than thoughts and prayers. I'm gonna take a thousand copies of my new autism children's book, Brandon Spots His Sign Down There and gift them to the hundreds of children who have signed up for the library summer reading program, which actually kicks off today. And then I came to Houston and so many of my friends here, I'm a fifth ward native, um, said, we wanna make a donation, we wanna help. So I partnered with Buy the Book in the Woodlands and people came through yesterday by the hundreds and they bought books. Every children's book almost that they had in this store, they picked up and bought. They bought over five cases of books. So I'm not just going down there with my autism children's book. I'm going down there with an additional 1,000 books Ugh. to gift to the children in Uvalde. You know what? This is such a great story. And, you know, you're a mom. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's where it starts, right? And I think that's what, what kind of pulled at your heart is that these kids, that community needs something. And, and there's so much that we all get yeah. from a book. Yeah, it is. And, you know, to say, I love you. I'm thinking about you to bring life and love and laughter. You know, I've got all the books packed into my family's Camping World RV. We're gonna drive down there and hand them out. And we also have gift baskets for the librarians and the volunteers at the library. It's so important because as we always say, it takes a village. We're looking at your van there. Um, this is so great to be able to make this trek. Now, a little bit about you, Shaletta. You're a comedian, founder of the Multimedia Podcasting and Production Company. You have four kids, three of who have uh, autism. Yes. And so was there a moment in, in time when you thought, wow, one, one child, okay, this is going to be hard. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get, you have three who are on the spectrum. Yeah. Um, did you have a moment at one point and thought, you know what, mom and is hard. Yeah. And this is not easy. Is that where the books kind of became inspiring for you? The books came because I wanted to give other parents hope. When I saw my children making progress, I thought I want to let other moms and dads in the struggle know that things can and will get better. And how do I do that? By telling my children's story in a book and I've heard from so many other autism moms and dads who thought you know I was ready to throw in the towel I thought my child would never get better and I see you talking about your children and telling their stories through this book and it gives me hope and that's really what it's all about it's about hope it really is about hope and also giving um, kids who have differences a way to feel like oh, everybody yes. else oh my god my children have so much confidence now when they have their books and they can pass it out to their friends and they see and share their stories and read it to other kids who have special needs it just their confidence is through the roof right now and it's your youngest son is that Brandon or that's your oldest son well they're in alphabetical order okay we got lots of them so <laughs> Andrew's 15 Brandon is my second oldest he's nine so his book just came out for autism awareness month and I have Cameron goes to school which came out in 2020 and Daniel spot Daniel finds his voice which came out in 2021 oh it's so great and all of them speak to your children which I think is really great but all of them can speak to other kids as well which yes. is really important to be able to reach out and get that virtual hug for so many of these kids and for the parents. Yeah, and the books educate their classmates. That's so important. It really is yeah. because at the end of the day, we're a lot more alike than we are different. Yes, we are. Shaletta, lovely to see you. Thank it's you for doing what you're you. doing and, yeah. and making and touching these hearts in Uvalde as well. Thank you. Great to see you. And if you would like to help uh, in the community of Uvalde in a different way, head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv, for a full list of resources available to show your support to our neighbors to the West. We'll be right back with more Houston Life. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday at 3.30. Glad to have you with us Thank on this you. Monday. Glad to have you back. And uh, why don't we check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for what they have coming up at 4 o'clock. Hi, friends. Hi, guys. Hey. Yeah, happy Monday. Happy Monday. Hope you guys Monday. had a great weekend. Yeah. Um, you make sure you're looking for as much shade and hydration <laughs> as possible. It's yes. going to be a long summer, folks. Not the bad shade, just, you know, umbrella shade. <laughs> yes, the good shade. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah, good shade. Umbrella we'll shade. Good shade. Yes. It's only Monday. We got plenty of time to do that this yeah. week. Uh, umbrellas, buildings, whatever it takes. 
yes. <laughs> Awnings. Chris Frank, yeah, another hot one out there. Yeah. Really, really hot. I mean, and it's only going to get hotter because this big dome of high pressure is just going to build across us, which means we're going to be under this bubble that's going to be hard to break. You can see temperatures right now, upper 80s to low 90s, but the feels like numbers are easily to 100. Look at 101 in Conroe, Huntsville, Columbus, 102 in Brenham, upper 90s, Palacios 99, Houston 97. Humidity is right there in the 50% range for most of us. It doesn't take much with those hot temperatures to make them feel even warmer. The south wind is going to continue with us as we go through the uh, next several days. So no big changes there. Exact track radar, hard to find even a cloud to hide under. There's the hide that is in place. It's going to keep all of the showers, as you can see, up to our north and diving through parts of the southeast. But for us, it's just going to block everything. We'll talk more about it coming up at four. But stay hydrated. Take those breaks, AC shade, sunscreen, light clothes and hats. Always look before you lock that car. And don't forget your pets. Walks in the morning and evening are a whole lot better. Uh, that seven second rule, if you can't keep your uh, bottom of your or the top of your hand on the pavement for seven seconds, then it's too hot for those uh, animals also. Keep those water bowls nice and full. We're all going to need it. I'll have more at four. All right, we'll see you then, Frank. Thank you. And here's a look at some of the other stories we're covering for you at four o'clock this afternoon. A developing story right now from the city's east side. A car with three people, at least two of them students from HISD's Milby High School, has gone off a bridge into Bray's Bayou near the area where it meets Buffalo Bayou. Two people in the car were able to get out. Right now, rescuers are looking for a third person. We will have an update on those rescue efforts and the newest information on the investigation. The issue of gun control still front and center after numerous mass shootings in recent weeks, including this weekend. We're going to take a closer look at efforts to move gun reform legislation forward. Plus, it sounds like a broken record. Gas prices through the roof. We're going to show you where filling up. Get this, folks, already costing drivers 10 dollars per gallon my goodness Ooh. if uh, that's the case for us we we all need to start carpooling or something my goodness yeah. ten dollars wow. wow no already tough enough goodness nope. oh my word. ten dollars per gallon wow okay folks well mm -hmm. thanks for the bad news and the good news <laughs> a little bit of both we'll we, see we do what we can <laughs> okay um why don't we switch gears and hang uh hang out with joe sam out in the kitchen he is celebrating caribbean heritage month hey joe Houston is known as a melting pot of proud ethnic communities, including residents that hail from the 26 island countries that make up the Caribbean, from Trinidad, Tobago, to Jamaica, Puerto Rico, St. Lucia, and many others. According to the Caribbean American Heritage Foundation of Texas, over 200,000 Caribbean Americans reside in Houston, and that number continues to grow, bringing the island vibes to areas like the 3rd and 5th Ward, Sugarland, and stretching into Fort Bend County. That's absolutely right. Now, one of the best ways Houston represents this diverse community is through its cuisine with the diverse range of island flavors. Joining me now are chefs Keisha Griggs and Akila McCrith. Both are featured chefs on this month's Houston Black Chef's Table. This is going to be absolutely amazing. I can already smell the goodness <laughs> that's happening here. So we're going to start with you because I, I like to start with something sweet. Oh, yeah. So what are we doing? OK, I'm making banana fritters. Okay, that sounds we good to say, me. We say flitas. Flitas. Yes. I like the way that sounds. Yeah. Okay, what do we start with? <laughs> okay, um, the uh, ripest bananas you can find. Oh, right. that looks good. And then we mush them. Now, how long does this usually take for you guys to create this here? Because it doesn't look like a too complicated dish. No, um, maybe about 10 minutes and then prep time, everything about 30 minutes. Mm, that sounds good. And while she's getting our dessert ready, we're going to come back to you. We're going to be making some dumplings here as well. We're making curry crab and dumplings today. Oh. So crab and dumplings, curry crab and dumplings is like a staple um, in a Caribbean household, spe specifically Trinidadian. Mm. So we're going to do a little spin and we're going to stuff our dumplings with our curry crab and cook it with a delicious lemongrass broth and oh. lemongrass curry broth. Okay, so you're going to put me to work. Akila, you keep on working, going on your yes. fritters here. I'm going to come back to you in a bit. What are you going to have me do? All right, you're going to pit. I'm going to just do a sample of it really fast. You're just going to pit a spoonful of the mixture mm -hmm. in, and then you're going to, we're going to do it together. Oh, it smells so good already. I can already tell why this is so important to everybody here in Houston. It right. is. How do I, how do so I make gonna this So you're going to get happen? your hands dirty a little bit. Let's so do it. you're just going to take the edges, mm -hmm. and you're going to hold it really delicate, and you're just going to close it up. Okay. 
Just close and tuck. Now, mine is not going to look as pretty as yours, close but we're going to try tuck. and make this happen. Close and tuck, close and tuck. <laughs> you actually doing a pretty decent uh, job for I the first know. time with the clothes <laughs> and tuck. Um, right. And then we're going to spin it up in, and that's our dumpling. And this is a really easy preparation. We're going to put it over in the pan. We're going to stir it off, add a little bit of our lemongrass broth, um, and steam it. All like right. a, a Traditional Chinese dumpling. You do that, and we're going to come back here All to right. you. What do we have going on so far now? I All see right. you've added so some more things. I'm mixing everything. I added the flour, the vanilla, and nutmeg. Also, um, a half a cup of sugar. Mm. And we're just, we just got to, it's a lot of arm work. It's a lot of arm work. You yeah. get the muscles going, right? Yes. How long yes. does it take once you put it on the pan to get it ready um, to go? Really? About, like, maybe two minutes each side. This is a really simple dish that a lot yeah. of people can do at home, right? Yes. For both of these dishes, it's really, really great. And I want to come back to you, Keisha. Can you explain to us a little bit more about Black Chef's Table and the important work that you've been doing here in the community? Absolutely. So Black Chef Table is a um, multi-week ongoing pop-up dinner series focusing on African-American chefs in the community in and around the city of Houston mm -hmm. as well as our African-American food purveyors. So our farmers, our, our, our fishermen, our ranchers, our, herb, our, our herbs, our microgreens, all are sourced from African-American um, food purveyors and Farmers. This is going to be really, really tasty because you guys have events that are coming up. Tell us the event that we're going to be seeing for the Black Chef's Table for you. What date that's going to be happening? So on. my Black Chef Table is going to be on June 11th, this Saturday at June 11th at 8 o'clock. Um, it's a Caribbean, a, a trip through the West Indies. Uh, Trinidad is a rich culture that has food flavors from all over the uh, West Indian diaspora. So I'll be showcasing that at my Black Chef Table. And Akila, you have yours coming up as well, too, on the 25th, yes. right? Yes. And what we're going to be seeing for you doing more of these apple, these bananas for this, correct? Yes, this, so this will be here um, for the dessert and I'll have a, an adult version of it with uh, rum and uh, rum ice cream. Oh, I yeah. love the way that sounds. And I have come prepared with my fork ready to eat. I'm <laughs> gonna just take a quick little taste of each and then as we're, mm, mm, no, this is good. Okay. Mm, I'm gonna give you that here. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and send things Oh, I'm back. We want to make sure that you guys go and check it out. We're posting a calendar of events for Caribbean Heritage Month on HoustonLife.tv. We're going to go ahead and send things back over to you guys, Courtney and Derek, while I finish this up. I'm going to save some of the banana fritters for you guys, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope so. Please do. It smells so good. Thanks, mm. ladies, and thanks, Joe, as well. All right. Let's check good. in with Lauren Kelly, who's getting some ninja training ahead of tonight's American Ninja Warrior premiere. <laughs> Our own ninja. We got this. Yes! You guys, I'm getting the pep talk for the American Ninja Warrior from two veterans, Sam Sam and his wife Karen. I'm here at the gym. I've been practicing for my debut on the show. Are you ready? I don't know that I can do this, but let's see. Here we go. Three, Three two, two, one. Hands up. premiere tonight. New season 14 happens right here on KPRC2. Two of the vets from the show. I've got Sam San and Karen. I know you guys remember them. They had such a great story. We're here at your gym. Please tell us what you've been up to over these last few years. Well, I've been training and I'm um, training all these students. Who do uh, we have students. here? Well, we got Madeline Medeiros, Joseph, Nolan, um, Ariana and Chris, you know, they're all coach here. And, you know, Fierce been competitors. They have been helping me as I've been training. Karen helped me with the lache. I've learned all the new terms. Uh -huh. But does this compare to the big American Ninja race that we see the course on screen? Oh, here at San San Roy, definitely. We, uh, we lift up beyond the stand of American Ninja Warrior. Uh, it's even better, you guys. Oh, well, course, thank yes. you for having us out today. We're so excited for the premiere tonight. And as a matter of fact, I got to chat with two of the show's hosts earlier today. Check it out. I'm getting emotional again. This night is really getting to me. Tonight is the season 14 premiere, American Ninja Warrior. This is so much fun. I love the show because every season we think that, oh, last season it was the best. We saw some of the most ultimate warriors competing and lots from Houston, to be honest. But you know what? It keeps getting bigger and better every single year. That's why I'm so excited for tonight's premiere. Matt, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us about what viewers can expect from the big show tonight? Well, it's just what you said, Lauren. I think the energy 
uh, of these athletes is just incredible. And Houston has been long been a hotbed from iron sports and athletes like Sam San and Josh Salinas, Daniel Gill, uh, Vance Walker just moved there, Kevin Carbone. Houston is so well represented and we're so excited for the show. The obstacles are harder. The athletes have gotten even better, but there are some unbelievable moments and I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say there's a proposal tonight. <gasps> Well, what, like, like a marriage proposal? Like a marriage proposal yes. tonight on the show. Please tell me that uh, the guy proposing maybe does it like throughout the obstacle course, like he has to jump over and swim <laughs> to his fiance, or hopefully she says yes, right? Well, well, I I'll give you a little bit, and I don't want to spoil it, but he needed to, he needed to hit a buzzer to prove to himself <laughs> to prove to himself that he was like, all right, I got this because you don't propose after falling in the water, right? Like no. you gotta hit a buzzer. You gotta yeah. feel like you gotta have two high moments. And so um, put it like this, the proposal made the buzzer feel anticlimactic, right? It was just, it, it was it was that, it was that big of a deal. So when we talk about these athletes, is there a certain rigorous training that you guys suggest one start with if they ever wanted to be on a show like this? Yes, and this was, uh, and this is real talk now, because when I ran the course back in 2018, I trained with Kevin Bull, and I realized that I was weight room strong, but I wasn't ninja strong. Case in point, my first session lasted 30 seconds. He says, Akbar, I need you to do push-ups and pull-ups every single day, right? As many as you can do. And I start off at the low number. I won't tell you my number. Um, but you, I had to do as many as possible every single day. And that's how I was able to get my strength up. And then I went from that just in switching my grips on the pull-ups. But if you do that, you'll at least be upper body ready for Ninja Warrior. You just, you gotta find a gym. You gotta train obstacles. Cause we've had elite athletes. We've had gold medal gymnasts come out. We've had some of the best of the best, whether they be Navy SEALs or former NFL players, uh, other than Akbar who've tried the course. And if you don't train, you just won't do well. So go see Iron Sports there in Houston and get your training in and then get on the course. <laughs> it's it's all about that stamina, it, right? Like stamina yeah. and diet. Matt, do you think that if you were to run the course right now, you could do it? Go no, ahead, you man. just hit the key part. That was diet. So listen, <laughs> I, I'm still on I'm still on the McDonald's plan, the Ronald McDonald meal plan. You guys, thank you so much for the time. We can't wait to watch this season. And let's let's hope that that everybody says yes to that proposal and we get a <laughs> bunch of Houston athletes that are represented in the show this year. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, and Lord. shout out to one of my boys, Jody Avila, the big dog ninja out of Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm telling you, you guys produce a lot of big time ninjas. Hey, I'm, I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. There we go, Lauren. Not, not really, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great show tonight. Thanks, you too. Right, thank you. Well, you know, I tried to work on that today, but now my arms just feel like jello. But thank you so much, Sam, Sam, and Karen, and you guys for showing me literally the ropes because I've never been on any kind of American Ninja Warrior course. And this is essentially what you would need to train for if you were thinking about being on the show, right? Yeah, most definitely, yes. And it's all about stamina and diet. And as much as I thought it was about upper body, it's really about your core, right? Well, ev everything combined, you need your grip, you need your core, you need your, you know, full function of your body and, you know, and you need somebody like Madeline and Joseph that, yeah. you know, they're, they're well, the next generation. Well, can we have generation. them show us? What do they, can they, look at the chalk oh, on her hand. She's been jumping and they, flying all they're day. They're ready to go. They're going to show go, us. Go, guys, let's go. Uh, show them what I you got. fidget spinner. I see a lot of bars. Yeah, and that's trapeze. And uh, I think that's really what's adding to her height is all the swinging yep. that she does. She's been stretched. <laughs> she is stretched. <laughs> Sam, Sam, Karen, thank you so much. This was such a blast. If you guys want to come out, here you guys do parties and things like that oh big I'm time definitely gonna come back Derek and Courtney I am bringing you with me next time get your shoes ready yes. and your muscles ready because you're gonna need them okay we're bring down your, we your, are I'm super <laughs> impressed with those kids as well by the way Sam has the best ninja hair hands down for, for many years Sam has the best ninja hair the he best does ninja <laughs> hair <laughs> great job Lauren have fun out there sure Yes. All right, coming up on Houston Life, it's no longer just a relaxing way to spend an afternoon from tournaments.
access to scholarships, fishing is quietly becoming a big player in sports. A Pearland team just landed a spot on the Bassmaster High School All-American Fishing Team presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. He's in studio and joining us next when Houston Life returns. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. In your local spotlight, a Pearland team has just been named to a national high school team for fishing. Yeah, his name is Jared Mizell. He's one of just 12 teens to be named to the Bassmaster High School All-American Fishing Team presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. He joins us now along with Tyler Summerall from Academy. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to you both. And uh, by the way, your mom is here, Jared. Uh, she was saying that you started doing this when you were just eight years old. Yes, sir. I started fishing tournaments around when I was eight but my uncle and my grandparents they my my grandpa has a pond and I when I whenever I was young I started fishing that pond and and just grew on me and I what's just, so cool yeah. is at eight you know you're doing that probably with your grandpa right just for fun when did it kind of turn into the tournament scene for you we had uh, friends and we my buddy wanted to start fishing tournaments so I got on the boat with them and Around when I was 12, we got our own boat. And then my freshman year of high school, we got our, a new boat for me to go off to college. Um, I'm going to Tarleton State University to fish in college, and I'm so excited at the next step. But sometimes on the water, you get that competitive, like everybody has their bad days, but you gotta remember, it's just fun. Remember why you started it and just have a good time on the lake. And Jared, you're really good. You were selected, uh, you're one of only 12 members in the entire country to be selected for the All-American team. There were more than 400 applicants. And the sport of fishing really is is growing. Yes, sir, it is. Um, I'm, I'm so blessed to uh, be an All-American. Like, I was so happy to be All-State, to represent the state, and the icing on the cake was to be All-American and the memories I made and all the new friends and Academy for putting on the great uh, event and sponsoring everything was just a blessing. And Tyler, how does this work? Because this is basically a partnership um, with Academy and Bass, but how do you do this for these high school kids? Yeah, so essentially Academy is partners with Bass and we are so grateful for our partnership. Uh, we are able to do these things like sponsor the, uh, the high school uh, tournaments, the series, the All-American series, but also at the higher level, the Bassmaster Classic, which has been dubbed the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Um, so lots of fun partnerships that, are, that, that uh, enable us to do things like this and have fun and really uh, get besides people like Jared uh, here from our hometown. It's super yeah. cool. So essentially Academy is helping the sport grow by supporting uh, athletes like Jared. So I understand uh, you've got some pro tips for us, Jared, for casting. Yes, sir. Do you want to show us? We have only about a minute, but maybe we could do the express round. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nervous, Courtney. We were a little nervous about this. I mean, the easiest thing for me to do I mean, in this area is probably flip, and all you do is grab your bait and hold it next to you and just do that. Flip it out. Yeah, just flip it out. That's all you got to do. You just... Have you ever been fishing, Courtney? No. Why don't you try it? Okay, never done it. Um, okay. But so when you do that, do you do more than one line during your competitions, or do you just have one? Uh, I have about 30 rods on the boat. Oh, yeah, 30. 30, okay. but yeah, but you can only use one at a time. So okay. you press the button, just hold it in your hand, and flip it out there. Well, we'll see. You make it sound very easy. Just don't backlash it. That's what is that? I don't, what am it, I? It'll blow up. Am I holding it here? Yeah, push the button. Oh, this button. Yes, that button. Oh. So look at what you well, did. <laughs> I broke it. Wow. <laughs> if we had a close up, you would have seen just a, a knotted line. Okay. Well, uh, you know what? Sometimes bad fishing lines happen to good people. It's a good thing you have uh, 30 of those. <laughs> Um, I failed. <laughs> Jared, Tyler, thank you so much for stopping by and congratulations on all your success. Your mom was saying there are a few sports where you can hang out with your dad on a boat for yeah. eight hours. Uh, so I'm glad you get some more family time. Yes, sir. It's been 10 years and eight hours every weekend. It gets, it's a lot of time. You get it. to know your family. <laughs> <laughs> well. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank and you. And by the way, you can connect with Jared and his uh, progress if you'd like to follow along. We do have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. And also, you can find all the gear you need at your local Academy Sports and Outdoors. We'll be right back. 
Tomorrow on Houston Life, the Houston Grand Opera isn't what you'd expect why you're going to want to grab a friend or have a date night there. We just went to the opera with our friends Natalie and Joe and Joel and Mario. It was such a phenomenal night out. You got to go if it's been a minute. Okay. It's at the top of my list of recommendations. Also, what do astronauts take with them to space? Have you ever wondered that? Is it one item? Well, when you're a dad to a little girl, you take a teddy bear, of course. of course. Now there is a book about it. You'll hear from the little girl, her dad, and the mom on tomorrow's show. This is a true story, and it's pretty cool. Oh, I'm going to join for that one. You, oh, you're going to come I'm tomorrow? I'm going to be here. You're going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> thanks so much for joining us, Courtney. Thank you for joining and us. And thanks to all of you for joining us today <laughs> during the 3 o'clock hour. Uh, but keep it right here on KPRC2. That's right. We're going to do it all over again tomorrow. That's going to do it for us today. Yeah. We're going to hand it off to Studio A now. Courtney's like, you're all better for the fact that I show up every day. <laughs> yes. We are, which is true. <laughs> We're so happy she's going to be here tomorrow. And she's story, confirmed, folks. That story does sound really heartwarming, so really looking forward to it. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow.